Hey friends, are you tired of the boring drudgery of creating transition sound effects such as build-ups and down sounds and drops in your music? Help me. Well, I'm about to make your life a whole lot easier by giving you these free devices that generate random, original, usable, good sounding transition effects so you can focus on the music part of the music. And what kind of teacher would I be if I didn't show you how to make them yourself? So I've been creating these devices called RPGs or random preset generators that utilize Ableton 11's new randomize feature in racks. This button randomizes the position of the macros in instrument or audio racks. So each time you hit rand, you get a random result. The idea behind my random preset generators though, is to constrain the ranges of various parameters to achieve whatever result I'm going for. So random, but controlled random. Let's check it out. Okay, so what you're looking at here is Ableton Drift living inside of an instrument rack. So essentially the first four devices here, these two down sound and two build up sound uh, racks that I've created are using Ableton Drift. And the reason I'm using Ableton Drift is not only that it's available in all editions of Ableton Live, but it also handles audio rate modulation really well. And I'm using that a lot in these sounds. So let's go ahead and take a listen to what's going on here. Like I said before, just hitting the random button here will randomize the position of these macros. And these macros have been mapped to various things. You can see they've been mapped to various parameters inside of Drift. So every time I hit the random button, we're gonna randomize the position of these macros, which is going to yield a different down sound or drop sound result. I can't believe I didn't do this up until now. One of my least favorite things to do is to sit and mess with the sound forever. Instead of being able to work on like the musical aspect of something, this just makes this so much faster. Just every time I hit random, I'm getting a different usable down sound, right? It's, it's awesome. So that's what this one sounds like. This next one, this is a different down sound generator and I'm kind of using a different design principle to create this one. So this is focusing more on FM sounds. I like that kind of sound for transitions. So as promised, what I wanna do is I wanna walk you through how I built one of these. So I'm gonna make a new MIDI track. We're gonna grab an Ableton Drift and check this out. So if we're gonna make a down sound, one of the first things we wanna do is we wanna make sure that the pitch is actually going down, right? So this is really easy to do. We're gonna use envelope two. I'm gonna make the attack all the way at zero and I'm gonna make the decay. Let's just start with the decay around three seconds, okay? So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go over here to pitch mod. Obviously we're talking about modulating the pitch. So let's go ahead and add a positive modulation amount here. So now we get Now we can hear that, that pitch is going down. So when we wanna make a random preset generator like what I've been making is we wanna right click on the title bar and go to group. Now you'll notice that there's a shell around the device. If I click on this first icon, we can see now that we've revealed the macros, okay? These macros won't do anything unless we tell them what we want them to do. And the way that we do that is we hit this map button. Now you can see that parameters have highlighted in green. Anything that's green, you can actually add to macros. So let's go ahead and we're gonna map the waveform of oscillator one to this macro and then the shape to macro two. So now if I get out of mapping mode and I turn off oscillator two, all we're gonna be listening to is oscillator one. So every time I hit random, it's going to randomize those two knobs and we're gonna get vastly different sounds. So I'll go ahead and arm this. Right, so we're getting different sounds already, but we need a lot more variety going on here. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna look at using oscillator two, but this time with oscillator two, I wanna leave it on a sine waveform and I wanna drop it way down in octaves, okay? The reason I wanna do that is I wanna have a nice um, underlayment, if you will, <laughs> of sine waveform. So we get that kind of like bass drop kind of sound, right? So I don't want this to change. No matter what I do with random, I want that to that aspect of the sound to always be the same. Right? So that creates a nice layer under there. Now, let's start adding some other features to this sound. So one thing I could do is I could change the octave range of oscillator one. So what I'll do is I'll map this to this knob here. 
okay? And what I want to do is I don't want it to go very high. This is the idea of constraining ranges, to make it so that the sound doesn't ever get outside of the ranges that you want it to. So let's say instead of going up all the way to three octaves, I'll only let it go plus one octave and then down two octaves. So now when I hit random, we're going to be jumping around in octaves. So this is really gonna create a vastly different sound depending upon what octave range that first oscillator is. And remember, oscillator one is getting a lot of modulation already from other places. So speaking of modulation, let's try something else. Shape can actually uh, be a variable control and depending upon how the shape control moves through time, it makes a sound very different. So what I'd like to do is actually go over to the mod section and I wanna add this envelope, envelope two, to oscillator one's wave shape control. So let's go ahead and do that. We're gonna choose mod, and instead of using the mod wheel, we're gonna use envelope two, okay? And then for the destination, we're gonna choose shape. So oscillator one shape. So with the shape all the way up like that, let's go ahead and hit random a couple times and take a listen. Now we can see the oscilloscope start to move. What that means is that we're navigating through this wave shape. Let's maybe listen to one that has a more apparent result. Okay, <laughs> now we hear one that's really got an apparent result and we can see on the oscilloscope that move. Now you can't see the shape control itself move over time. It's not gonna show that animation, but you can easily see it inside the oscilloscope. Awesome, so that's a really nice modulation, so we're gonna leave that there. Now with all transition sounds, they always sound better to me when they have some sort of stereo element to them. So we're gonna go over to the mode here, and let's just go ahead and choose either stereo or unison. Let's just choose unison, and you can see that this is a variable control. So what I'll do is, I'll yet again, go over to map, and I'll map this to this knob here. So now if I hit random a couple times, we can now hear. Oh yeah, we've got stereo now. Awesome. So real quick, this channel is supported by folks who sign up for my Ableton online courses. As far as I know, my courses hold the crown for being the most thorough and robust learning resources for Ableton Live that exist. Between my four courses, songwriting, mixing and mastering, sound design, and live performance, there are over 100 hours of video content just like this and a thriving private Discord server full of musicians just like you who are rapidly upgrading their skills and music careers. So if you like my teaching style and want to learn more, check the link above and in the description. All right, back to it. Okay, so now that we've gotten that far, let's go ahead and do something else. Let's go ahead and animate this filter. So I'll put the filter in some middle position here. And the next thing I'll do is I wanna use the LFO to modulate the filter position. So what we'll do is we'll take this modulation off and we'll add 100% LFO modulation. Now take a listen. We can hear that LFO is moving, but it's moving very slow. So let's turn the rate up a little bit. Okay, so now we've got a fast LFO modulation. So the next thing that I wanna do is I want to map that actually to my random preset generator controls by clicking on the rate and then I'll map it here. Now, if it's super slow, it's gonna be hard to hear this. So yet again, we need to constrain this range. Let's go ahead and say that we'll start at seven hertz and we'll go all the way up to the highest amount. So now when I hit random, I actually think that if we let it go super fast, it goes into that audio rate. And of course with drift, like I said before, audio rate sounds good, but that might be a bit too heavy toward audio rate stuff. So I'm actually gonna pull this down maybe to 500 Hertz. So now we get. <laughs> nice, okay. So let's go ahead and add a little bit of resonance to that filter to make up for when it's kind of down lower. Now with resonance up, you can hear that we're kind of adding back energy where we've taken energy away, so we're not really changing in volume too much. Okay, so something else we can do is we can actually change the amount of the LFO with a modulator. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna choose envelope two, and as you can see, envelope two has a three second decay rate at this moment. So what that means is we can dynamically change the effect that the LFO has over the sound over time. So if I turn this all the way up, take a listen. <laughs> Notice that the LFO over time loses its ability to animate the filter. So what we can do is we can actually add a random element of that. So let's go ahead and say, all right, cool. 100%, we'll map that here. 
So now I want to make sure that I don't go under 100%. I want it to be at least zero or above, okay? So now, check this out. With every new sound... In fact, let's go ahead and push this up to about 50%, so we at least have some or a lot. Cool. So we can also have this envelope modulate the rate of the LFO. So if we go into mod, we can choose envelope 2 as the source, and then the destination will be the LFO rate. So check this out. This will essentially be a multiplier. We can hear that LFO over time get slower. And so what I'll do is I'll go ahead and map that percentage to this knob, and now every single time I hit random, we're gonna have a different amount of that effect over this LFO. And at the moment, it's actually going into the negative territory. Let's go ahead and leave that at zero. So now we get this. Radical. Okay, so now the final control is maybe the thing that will have the biggest effect over this sound, and I saved it for last so that you don't get confused. Essentially, if I change the decay rate of envelope two, because envelope two has an effect over so many things, it's really gonna drastically alter the sound. So at longer decay rates, we get. We get a transition sound or a drop effect that takes 17 seconds to resolve itself. At lower settings though, it's very quick. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to my map and I'm gonna map this decay. Now this is a really important control to get right. If I leave it how it is now and I hit random until it's like really short, take a listen. We don't hear a down sound because the decay rate is too fast. So again, we need to make sure we're constraining ranges. Let's say that one second, maybe one and a half seconds is the lowest that will allow this sound to go. And then 60 seconds, sure, we'll let it go all the way up that high. So now if I hit random, We've got endless down sounds forever, and they're all pretty nice sounding, right? Rad. Now, what I'll do is I'll go ahead and say, all right, this is now my random preset generator, and this will be drift variation or something. I don't know. By the way, make sure you're using your categories here. I'm going to add this to my RPG category here, and you can see that I have them all conveniently laid out right here. Awesome. So that's the design principle for making these transition sound random preset generators. Now, something else I want to show you is you might be like, well, I want to make a buildup sound. I have a couple buildup sounds, but let's just go ahead and use this preset to show you how that's done. This is actually super simple. As you can see, when we're thinking about making a down sound or a drop, what do we mean when we say drop? We mean that there is a sound that is losing energy over time, so it's kind of going down in pitch. So instead, all we have to do is just reverse this. What I'm doing is I'm saying, okay, instead of pitch mod going down, we're actually gonna take the pitch mod and go up with it, right? So now, we can hear that the pitch is now going up. I'll hit random a couple times. <laughs> now, of course, I've made a couple presets here that are kind of more focused on that idea and using some other design principles. Let's take a listen to this one. This one's utilizing some noise, and you can see that envelope one is actually a slow attack, so there's, it's going out of nothing, right? There's no sound right away, and then it comes in over time. Right? And then this one, this one's kind of taking advantage of more like uh, audio rate modulation or AM sounds. <laughs> kind of like a ring mod sound there, right? Okay, so that is using Ableton Drift to create these kinds of sounds. Now we're gonna move on to maybe my favorite way of making transition sounds, and that's using audio. So what I've decided to do is I've decided to use Simpler as the device for this, because yet again, Simpler is available in all editions of Ableton Live. So what you're hearing here actually is the sound of me slapping my garden hose with some water in it. Now what I've done, of course, is I've mapped a bunch of different parameters inside of Simpler to make it so that no matter what I do, whenever I hit random here, I'm going to get a down sound. So take a listen. <laughs> here's, 
Here's what that sound sounded like originally. <laughs> so what's cool about using Simpler for this is that you could drag and drop any audio into this random preset generator here and it will create a down sound for you. And each one's gonna be unique depending upon what audio you drop into here. So I could go up here, for example, and choose elephant. I don't know if I have any samples that are elephants, but let's find out. Elephant bass. Okay, I'll drag and drop that into here. Now, if I hit random a bunch of times. I'll be making a bunch of down sounds, but instead I'm using this sample. And so it's going to yield some different results, right? Pretty sweet. So let's go ahead and move on to this one. This is just the sound of my coffee machine in the morning, but I'm, <laughs> you can see I've added a bunch more parameters here. Let's go ahead and hit random a bunch of times. So what's the idea here? Well, essentially, in the control area, you can see that we have an amplitude envelope and a pitch envelope. So of course, just like in Drift, I'm using the decay rate of the pitch envelope and I'm adding a certain amount to it. And what that's gonna yield is a down sound that's taking the pitch of the sample and going down over time. In this case, I've used a lot of the uh, LFO here. And then I've made a bunch of up sounds or up sound presets here. And you can use my samples if you want, just by hitting random and getting a bunch of different results. But I think these are really useful just by grabbing a random sample and dropping it in there. And it doesn't have to be a long sample either. You could use a drum sample. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna grab a random, let's just grab a clap. So just a random clap here is gonna yield a different result. But you have to be careful because <laughs> you may need to turn the volume down a little bit. I'll hit random a bunch of times. Oh, check it out. I'll just hot swap the sample. Hit random a bunch of times. Now, these are very raw sounds, okay? One other thing I wanted to show you is that I've also decided to include a couple effects so that you can drag and drop these effects afterwards. So here's random delay. Now, I'm not gonna go through all the things that created this random delay, but I just randomized a bunch of parameters and now you can get... <laughs> That's sick. <laughs> I also made a uh, random reverb. Especially for down sounds, you're going to definitely want to use these. Let's go ahead and use uh, this on, yeah, this kind of FM down sound thing. Now, what you could do is you could hit random for both of these. In fact, let's do this. Let's go ahead and hit key and I will key map my Q key to the random of both of these together. And now we're gonna get some interesting random results from both of these instruments at once. Awesome. Cool, so if you want this pack of random preset generators, the link is up here. It's also down in the description and comments. As always, if Ableton's your thing, it's my thing too. So make sure you like, comment, subscribe. You know what to do. Much love, everybody. See you next time.